All right, we now welcome on a very awesome guest. He is number four, the defenseman for our Washington Capitals, Brendan Dillon. What's going on, man? How you doing? What's going on? Thanks for having me, fellas. Uh, appreciate it, as always. Yeah, looking forward to talking to you. So I want to start with this. You know, you can confirm or deny this, but I'm around the rink a lot. I know a lot of the guys around the rink and got to talking, and apparently there's a rumor that you were a little nervous for the Chicklets interview. Oh, I was a little nervous to be. I mean, this – Chicklets is the second second uh, most nervous I've been for a podcast. This one's the first, so oh nice. Um, you know, it was, that uh, figures. It was uh, <laughs> it was cool. I mean, I know I know Biz a little bit. Um, yeah, he spent some time in Vancouver uh, for the last couple of years, and even when he was still playing. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you go into those, and and you know, you hear some of them. I, I listen to them week to week, and you know, sometimes they're just chirping the guy and then sometimes they're a little laid back and then um, yeah. they were, they were pretty good with me. I think they were just giving me the, the rookie, uh, rookie initiation. Don't go too hard on them. So it was all good. Yeah. yeah I, that was a good I feel one. like, I feel like they don't go as hard, like towards like active players. Like they try to like, they don't want to get them in trouble. So like, yeah, but I feel when, like they uh, kind of have a history of uh, burying some guys by yeah. accident. Once, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you're retired you're though. In trouble. Yeah. Once you're retired, then that's, that's maybe I, maybe I'll do my one and done. So I won't have to worry about, uh, worry about <laughs> getting in trouble or anything after. So yeah, there you go. Right. Love it. Love it. So we'll talk a little off season first. I know it kind of came down yeah. to both the caps and your hometown team, the Canucks. I mean, very good team, young team, a lot of promise and uh, some former caps on the team. Now, as we know, yeah. uh, curious to know kind of what the selling point was that made your mind up to stay here in DC. And I don't know if you've really said this before in another interview, but like how close were you to maybe signing with Vancouver compared to staying in DC here? <laughs> to, be, to be honest, like Vancouver, Vancouver was in the mix. Um, yeah. But there was, there was, there was a couple other teams that I think were a little closer than, than Vancouver was to be in kind of the, I guess number two on the list, but gotcha. from from the moment I got to Washington and got to to meet the guys and play for the team and kind of check out the atmosphere and the fan base and just the setup around the DMV, um, just just a really cool area and something that I wasn't super familiar with being on the East Coast. Like I, you know, I grew up on the West. I played in California for six years, so I mean, I was a West Coast guy, and um, so kind of coming out here and um it was just I didn't know anybody on the team didn't know you know even from workouts or something this summer where you know you'll maybe say hi to a guy I genuinely didn't know anyone so um you know in free agency too this summer everything was a bit of a gong show um I'm sure you can see with some of the yeah, yeah. contracts that guys signed or how late guys held out and it's just a, a weird time obviously around the world but in, in professional sports too so uh when when it kind of came down to it and it was a little frustrating with how the playoffs went for us. We, we definitely had some, some higher expectations. And I think that's just the culture that, you know, Ovi and, and Backy and these guys have kind of created in Washington over their, their tenures. And um, I think just being, being able to be a part of that and having that as an option, that just seemed to be number one, if it was available and, um, right from, you know, my kind of exit meetings with Mac and, um, you know, talking with the guys and, and just how frustrated everyone was with last year and, and how mm -hmm. it ended. Um, I was just like, man, I, I think feel like we got something to prove still. And, um, you know, here we are this year, obviously sitting in a good spot and you don't want to think about what ifs, but um, here we are 30 games in the season, um, you know, first place in our division um, teams rolling, coaching staff's been awesome. Uh, the, the boys are still having a lot of fun and, um, you know, been been having some, some some good uh, good relationships with the boys on the ice as well, so it's been great. So uh, going back to you coming to Washington for the first time, is there like anyone in particular who really made you feel comfortable? Like when you first got here, like people who reached out to you right away after the trade or anything? There was there was <clears throat> quite a few of the guys. I mean, um, the, the, honestly, at least ten or fifteen of the guys texted me just welcoming me. Um, I think when I, once I got here playing with John you know he really kind of helped me settle in on the back end just from system side and the hockey side I think you know I really bonded with Willie he's uh there's there's only a couple of us Canadians uh on the squad there's only three last year and then Schultz he kind of took Holtz's spot as the number three yeah. uh Canadian on the team so we're keeping our three three guy quota um but it was just uh, <laughs> it was it was cool because yeah he was kind of just showing me and he's been here for what, eight or nine years now. And, and I, you know, I feel like Willie's the mayor of mayor of the mayor of Arlington. So everywhere he's right. at, uh, <laughs> you're, you're in good hands when you're around. So whether it was restaurants or spots to go, um, 
you know, he definitely made me jumping straight to the rooftop of Don Tito's if you need be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Claren, you know, well, I mean, it's, it's been unfortunate. We haven't been able to really yeah. experience too much or get the dance shoes on with, uh, with COVID going. So, um, yeah, it's been, I guess it's been good. We can just focus on hockey, but, um, once things open up, it'll be nice to, nice to get around town and, and check things out. Yeah. So you mentioned, uh, focusing on hockey, uh, and you mentioned the playoffs, uh, earlier, how uh, you guys are kind of disappointed. Do you guys think you will work too hard on the uh, pregame handshakes before instead of focusing <laughs> on the game or what? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's something where I think we, we've got a good mindset of it where, where we, we have a lot of fun in the locker room. The guys, uh, we've got a lot of different, obviously. Yeah, Christ, you, you got to have 23 different handshakes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's just say I got dressed about five to five to seven minutes earlier to make sure before you're going out <laughs> for periods and, and for warm up. So, but it's, I think it's something where it doesn't matter if you're the number seven D man or your OV or your fourth line mm -hmm. guy. I mean, everyone feels a part of things. And um, I think that's, uh, that's what kind of makes us uh, such caps. a tight knit group and yeah. makes us the caps. And um, you know, who knows if I, if I signed with another team and I came in looking for some handshakes, it wouldn't have been the same. And uh, <laughs> so there, there's another, another big reason just to have some fun with the fellas every day. All right. So speaking of non-hockey related things, uh, this is a personal history between you and me that I'm not sure you know exists. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> I wrote an article in the off season about uh, how the Capitals needed to re-sign you. You yeah. obviously liked what you saw. You shot me the follow. Yeah. First NHL player followed me. So obviously I think there's a pretty solid relationship there. there I don't go. hear back oh. from you until I DM you. So I just want to know yeah. what role I played in getting you re-signed and just your side of the story. Well, I, I told my agent to only take two percent, so I owe you one percent. Uh, nice, one percent there, Benny. So, yeah, so it's, um, you know, I think Mac maybe saw that roll up on through his Twitter feed or something, and then went to Ted and the ownership group and was like, "Hey, I mean, Ben Little knows where it's at. He this guys know what he's talking about, dude. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. one percent of that ticket is enough to finish you through college, Ben. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. So, so what I, yeah. Love it. So we'll talk some season. Like you said, now the guys are rolling. You're in first place in the division. Kind of took a little bit to get going, obviously. Brand new coach, brand new system. Uh, do you guys feel like you're completely, I don't want to say bought in because you're obviously bought in from the beginning, but you, you're you all kind of on the same page now in terms of you've learned that system, you know how it works, and, and how long did it take to kind of get everybody uh, going under that system and whatnot? Yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely took a little bit of an adjustment period. I mean, even for guys that have been here, you know, the, the OVs and the OSHAs and these guys have been here for a long time. Um, when you get a new coach and there's going to be tweaks and as similar as the you know, styles are, a lot of the teams play, play pretty similar. There, there's still the little subtle differences that um, all it takes is one guy to not be on the same page on the ice. And um, you know, the next thing you know, it's in the back of your net. So yeah. I think um, for the first kind of five to 10 games, we were, we were winning hockey games and I think we we're kind of getting by a little bit more on the skill and the talent that we have because our, our roster, it's, it's ridiculous to be honest, the, the, the yeah. amount of talent we have. But um, I think that kind of, we lost, I think three or four in a row once we went on that heater at the beginning of the year and just kind of showed us like, Hey guys, if, if, if we're going to, if we're going to do this thing, we're going to have to, you know, change and then buy in completely. And, and it's, when we focus on the defensive side of things, which is what Lavi preaches with us, and it's it kind of sounds routine, cliche, hey, you know, defend hard, yeah. lead the offense. It's pretty black and white for us when we when we do do that, and you know, then you can get into the offensive zone and let you know the koozies and the you know the, the super high end talent guys go to work. It's it's just fun to watch. So um, I think we've we've realized, hey, when we you know we're in games or we're we're winning, and you know this last streak we had here, whatever it was, eleven or. 12 and one or two or whatever. I think we were playing better hockey, but we still even internally felt we've got another gear. And, and that's the, that's the exciting part is we know we still haven't played a full 60 minutes or had, you know, the offense and defense clicking, which, um, you know, we've got, what is it? 25 or 26 games left to go. So yeah. hopefully we can just, uh, just keep it rolling. I think uh, one of the biggest question marks going into the season for the Cavs was uh, the goaltending. We didn't like, no one really knew what was happening. I guess the plan A was like, obviously Sammy would kind of take over. Uh, Lundquist was obviously going to mentor him and fight for a starting spot too. And then all of that happens. Vanacek comes in, Sammy has COVID. Like it just was a whirlwind. And like, we're like, oh shit, like what's, what's going to happen here? So just 
Yeah. I guess comment on how like how well they've they've done like kind of like regrouping here like midway through the season here. I think I think a lot of the I think the Caps organization deserves uh, some sort of medal for the things we've had to deal with here to start the year between yeah. COVID and you know Lundqvist Hank going through his issues and then the staff managing just there was a lot going on schedule changes and I know every team's going through it but um, you know some of these teams that have had guys get shut down like you know Boston has three or four guys test positive and so they've got a couple games I mean we had to keep playing we had to yep. managing like like the cap with you know we're playing with 11 forwards on certain nights just because you know we do have guys out and and I think it was uh for the goaltending specifically that seemed like you said to be a bit of a question mark for us okay do you have anybody proven um Sammy's you know a high-end goalie but he hasn't played a full year of you know, being the guy and, and VTech obviously got his first taste of, of kind of NHL in, in the bubble. So um, I think for, for where our team's at and we knew the importance of defending for those guys to give them, you know, not to just uh, throw them right into the fire with, with nothing. And right. um, they both played great. And uh, Sammy, of course, going through a COVID, I mean, he's still, still said he feels some, some effects of it the odd time. And um, you know, for, your lungs and, and especially playing in the NHL, you, you need every little bit of, uh, of the physical side of things to be, be clicking for yourself. So um, both of them have been playing great. And uh, again, you know, it's kind of up to Lavi who have been kind of going back and forth and um, to be able to have two goalies that for us as, as the boys, we, we feel confident in both of them. It's, it's not like, Oh shoot, you know, Sammy's going in or Vitex going in. We've got to, yeah. they, they, they both give us a chance to win every night and, um, they're young guys too, so they're just having a blast. They always got smiles yeah. on their faces around the rink, which uh, which makes it even better. Yeah, I mean, we have like a million back to backs, or you guys have a million back to backs coming up, so they're both going to be playing, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's well, like that's why the schedule, the schedule guy. This will be our third back to back, and we got like four days or five days with no games. It's like that's kind of nice, though. Right now, I get these four or five days off, kind of take a little it bit is, of a break. It is nice. I mean, but I, you know, instead of having the back to backs, I'm, I'm sure if you talk to a lot of the guys, we'd rather yeah. mix one of those in this week and. But yeah. the, the weather, how it's been the last couple of days, there's there's no complaints for for a few days off. So I like it. Nice. Uh, speaking with the weirdness going on this season, what's it like playing just the same opponents every night? Obviously, with the Boston series, frustrations kind of yeah. boiled over a little bit there. So yeah. as fans, yeah. we love it. Yeah, no, I mean, as as players, we love it. I think. Well, for me personally, in my game, like I love the playoff type of games, and I think yeah. our team, you know, we're we're kind of built where we could play that the speed game we can play the skilled game we can play the defensive physical game and um, I think that's what's exciting to to be a part of is, is it doesn't matter what what you know team we, we're playing on any given night but um, when you're playing the seven same teams and it's like okay oh yeah. shit, here we go for the seventh time we're playing the Islanders or you know sixth time we're playing the Devils um, it's you know, it's a little annoying, but you know, we're, we're all going through the same thing. I mean, we're pretty fortunate to, to have all the teams be somewhat geographically close. I mean, you look at the Canadian division and from Montreal to Vancouver, we're talking about a three hour time change and a five or six hour flight. So, um, yeah. you know, that's, that's obviously not fun to have to do uh, a couple of times in a year and be an inner division game. Um, but I think the the whole kind of baseball setup where you go to a city and you play a couple couple games there, you can actually actually unpack your suitcase a little bit for a few yeah. days instead of just, you know, coming in and getting used to the bed and then you're on your way out. Right. So kind of um, set up shop definitely. a little bit. Yeah. But I think I think, you know, to to have a little bit of a rivalry and, and sometimes, you know, things such as the, the the Boston game, you know, there's something happens in the first game and then you're playing them two nights later it's uh yeah, yeah. it's fun and, and it makes the the games that's much more important i mean when you're in a normal schedule division games are four point games and now we got that for 56 times so um it's uh, kind of got a playoff atmosphere feel even though we don't have the fans even though we don't have some of the normal things but um definitely definitely been cool yeah i thought i thought you were gonna drop some gloves uh and, and against Boston on that second game, but Wilson just did all the fighting for you guys, huh? I was gonna say, well, we, we got those guys what four four more times or five oh, so more times, so it'll it's, probably happen plenty later. Plenty of time, yeah. Uh, it'll be a you, lot of fun. Yeah. You packing the PS like half the guys on the team? I'm on the Xbox. Xbox, guy. Xbox you pick, guy, so you packing yeah. and playing Me too, Warzone big with Xbox them? Guy. 
Yeah, I got well. I, I bought mine going into the bubble, so I uh, oh yeah, I, obviously I wasn't yeah. a big gamer before, and then um, I got them for the bubble, and pretty much all the fellas had that, and and we're playing. So I was like, all right, you know, I'll uh, I'll get into the mix, and then now Call of Duty's obviously been a big part, big part yep. of the caps is uh, um, yeah road road trips and then um i I didn't realize but you know guys that have playstation or they even have their their gaming kind of laptops we can all play together so it's been great yeah so kind of going back to some systems here and we've talked about it on twitter a bit this laviette defensive system where it gets kind of pretty aggressive for you guys in terms of uh on the defensive side where it's like where the off wing can come in pinch keep the boards and it's all i mean the whole main point of it is to obviously extend time in the offensive zone how how different is that compared to, you know, even Reardon system last year or your time in San Jose? And is it kind of maybe one of your favorite systems to play in so far, being able to activate so much and like it's half the time that you're damn, you're down there behind the goal, the goal, almost yeah. on the goal line, you know, working the puck in a cycle. Yeah. Well, I think for, for the kind of makeup of our team, like, like for me personally, I, I love that I get to skate more and I love that I get to kind of, kind of join right. and be a part of the, the play. And I think for, for all of our demon, I mean, Orly's got great offensive, you know, John's obviously Johnny Carlson and I'm um, Schultz too. I think for, for everyone, it's really, really I helped mean, us. And Nick Jensen's been breaking out like crazy now. Jens, Jens has been getting on the score sheet. And, and I think when, <laughs> when you look at our team, um, you know, we're a bigger team, but, but a lot of us can move. And, and that's something where when you talk about the offensive zone, you talk about being aggressive, um, there's going to be mistakes, you know, forwards or defense, whatever it might happen. Um, but, but we're able to get back and cover for each other. And I think that was a big part of what, what Lavi has is, is, you know, layers to it. So, um, you can be aggressive. We, we want to try and keep, you know, the best defense is another cliche, but, but playing in the offensive zone. So if yeah. we can get down there, get some zone time, um, the, the coaching staffs that I've had in the past, you know, sometimes if you, you have your, you know, you, you take your foot off the gas per se, um, or sit back as it's usually when you're in trouble, when you're trying to be safe. And, and Lavi's even encouraged us when the empty net, um, you know, doubter had that one, um, in Philly a couple nights ago where a lot of times it's like, Hey, you know, maybe just eat it, maybe just try to kill some time. But, you know, he, he has confidence in us defensively where, you know, it takes some chances. Um, you can almost kill the game per se. Um, and, so knock on wood, we'll, we'll hopefully yeah. can keep that rolling. And, um, you know, the system's obviously been working well for us. Yeah. I'm about to say it's showing up for you too, eight points already. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I was hoping for a couple more second assist passing over to Johnny. <laughs> Go, so right. When he gets, uh, when he gets going, um, even more so. Um, Tell him to start shooting more up. so you can get that primary. <laughs> yeah. The power play has been so hot though. It's like, Hey, let's just try and draw a few penalties and get, get those guys out there. They get them yeah. gas so you can get some time on it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been trying to get on the power play for my last nine years in the league, so I don't know. It's coaches, you know. The other thing is that we have coming up is, or not, not really an issue, but Wilson gets off a seven game suspension. Sprong's playing so well. We like at this point, we have too many players like playing too well. Like, have like it's got to be impossible to for him to make to make a decision on who to scratch or who to not scratch. It's hey, that's that's why I'm just happy I'm a player. You know, I don't have to make yeah, those right? decisions. So, yeah. um, so I'll put your I think gear it's, on. If, if you want to, if you want to have, I'm sure for a coach, it's, these are the good decisions where everyone's playing so well, you don't know who to scratch. And I think even on the back end, you look at our makeup and, you know, between Jonas and, uh, and Trevor Van Riemsdyk, yeah. these are two quality, quality defensemen that on other teams might be like a four or five or, you know, yeah. and, and it's just, it sucks, but those are the things when you're part of such a, such a good quality team is, is you've got that depth. And like you said, Spronger's scratch for a bunch of games comes in and he's lighting up, lighting it up. And, um, now we get Willie back and once we get Lars back, um, like you said, there's going to be some tough decisions, but, um, you know, that's, that's the unfortunate side of things. Deep, deep ass team oh, ready yeah. for a cup run for sure. That'd be nice, man. I've, I've been, I've been close, but no cigars. So <laughs> I wouldn't mind, uh, getting back in the mix. For there you sure. Go. For sure. What you got, Ben? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, like, obviously Carlson last year had a monster season. He was, like, setting records. He was the runner-up for the Norris. Yeah. Um, so I was just wondering what it's like playing with him and how you get, how you feel about being paired up with him and what the team yeah. sees in you guys, keeping you guys together. Yeah, well, can't can't really say enough good things about Johnny. He's, uh, I mean, I think he's, like, fourth all-time in assists for the Caps now. And it's Pretty um, good. Yeah, yeah, is that good? Um, <laughs> I think he uh, – his 500th point the other night too earlier this season mm-hmm. um 
he's just he's just a guy who who makes everything seem so easy you know he's just so so skilled as such got such a great stick and I think it's kind of underrated but he's a he's a big man you know he's we're talking 6'2 6'3 220 and you know when he's moving guys in front of the net and in the d zone um, he's not easy to play against and I think everyone sees his offense I mean playing against that power play you know the the quarterback position up top is so important and um, he just settles things down, um, kind of calms, calms things. And um, I think as a, as a partner, I mean, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to give him the puck, just trying to be, you know, kind of, kind of the safety valve back there and, and let him use his offensive creativity. But I think, again, I think I mentioned earlier from, from day one, when I got here, um, he's been in the BMV for what how many years now, 10, mm-hmm. 11 years. He's, uh, he's been a long time capital and um, he's a big part of our team. So I think when, you know, whether it's systems questions or just in the room, he's, he's a pretty funny guy when you get to know him away from the rink, you know, he's uh, a big Brady guy, um, you know, loves his football. He's pretty connected when it comes to what's going on with, with other sports. And um, I think when it comes to our pair, the coaches have just kind of said, you know, I, I like to be more physical and, and, and can skate to keep up with him. And, and I think for him, he's just a guy who, who can, can be positive in all, all situations. So, um, you know, the way the year started, we, we knew, you know, there'd probably be some injuries or some changes. And I started the year with Schultz and uh, that was great. And him and him and Orly were together. And then um, just kind of how it shaked out. I think the last probably 15, 20 games we've been together and um, teams been winning and personally I've been having some success and, as is he so um just to kind of continue down that that road for the next 20 25 games and hopefully four rounds of playoffs so it'd be nice yeah he used to put on a pretty kick-ass bocce ball tournament at his house every summer too when things oh, yeah. get back to normal you have to tell him to get back on it all right yeah he's uh, i mean there's so many things i feel like i've got a laundry list of things i've got to check out, you know, do the morning right gotta check out this guy's house even <laughs> we'll, when we're we'll back get, here we're not yeah. allowed to so yeah, uh, we'll get to that at the end, but we're, we're, we're pretty much claiming the rights on Dilly Does DC since you were so well in his nasty does BC. So we're, we're claiming the content rights on that. We'll just follow you around. We'll just pep around the DMV here. Perfect. Just bring, um, bring, bring around the, the camera crew and tell me where yeah. to go and what the, oh, yeah. the, the do's yeah, and don'ts. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Perfect. Mix in, mix in a couple of drinks along the way, make it interesting, but you know. It makes it more you gotta fun. Be. Why not? Yeah, yeah have to. <laughs> So uh, when was your uh, like kind of, oh shit, I'm in the NHL moment, like early in your career? Yeah, uh, I kind of joked, I joked around with the OSHA about it, but my first game um, was against St. Louis when I was with the Dallas Stars still. And uh, there's a play where I came around the net and David Backus absolutely oh, God. crushed me. Like, it, like <laughs> all 230 or 240 of them, I swear, just put me through the wall and OSHA was on the ice and I, I feel like he was laughing. He had to, he claims he doesn't really remember, but he probably you know, was. Yeah, he probably was. And I just remember getting back to the bench and, you know, I'd played in the American league against some men, you know, guys that were putting food on the table for their families. And which is, it's just such a different mindset, you know, that the man's strength is they say when you're younger and playing juniors, you know, you go from kind of the, the, the big dog at, at age 20 where you're playing against these 16 year olds so all of a sudden 21 and you're playing against these these men and yeah um I remember my first NHL game I was just so nervous to do anything and then on top of that you get crushed your first or second shift I got back to the bench and was like this is this is crazy like I don't I'm know out. I'm gonna survive and here I was at <laughs> six four 200 pounds and I'm like I'm like geez these guys are tossing me around like nothing but there's there's so many moments even even still I mean I I think I think when you, you know, you pull into a city and you're getting booed as you're going out onto the ice or, um, you know, you're walking around, this is obviously pre COVID and, you know, going for dinner and people recognize it and they're like, Oh, you know, you guys suck. Hopefully you lose tomorrow. And you're like, Hey, sweet. You know, I can't wait to Thanks. meet you guys and you guys will be, you know, you won't be too happy with us. It's just, just little things where when you're, when you're not just playing, you're, you know, you're playing for a city, you're playing for, for something bigger than, than that. I think that's, that's the cool part of being in the NHL and, um, obviously getting to play with guys like Ovi and Joe Thornton and Brennan Morrow, Jamie Ben. I mean, my, uh, you know, yeah, he plays with some legends, absolute legends there. Yeah. I've been so yeah. lucky. It's, it's ridiculous, but yeah. yeah what can I you, say? You mentioned, um, cities like booing you and like, like just making fun of you off the ice, which, what is the worst city? Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He hasn't gotten a battery thrown at him yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think with being, 
we, we actually played Pittsburgh in six, 2016 in the finals. And, and that was, you had like two days in between games. So we were in Pittsburgh a little bit more and then coming to Washington and, and the rivalry yeah. we had with Pitt. I feel like every time we're there, it's just like. Yeah, it's brutal. Yeah. So Morgan wants to be, you know, you, got, you did absolutely. Right. Yeah. So kind of yeah. sticking so, on. So I'd, I say, mean, I'd say Pittsburgh's got to be one. Yeah. Talking so, about fans, I mean, this this obviously has been kind of crazy, but things are kind of getting back to normal. You're starting to see fans slowly work their way back into arenas. I mean, unfortunately, it looks like, you know, the Caps and D.C. are going to be the last to do it. But how much is the, how much of a difference has that made, even if it's like 5,000 fans, 2,500 fans at some of these arenas? I mean, you guys had Philly's very first game with fans in it, uh, yeah. obviously beat them. But, I mean, what's the difference been like? And, is, and before that, was it tough almost to kind of generate your own momentum throughout a game? Yeah, it was, I'll be honest, the, the Philly game was, even though it was only 3,000 fans, it was, it'd been over, over 12 months since we'd had fans in a game, you know, and um, the bubble when we got there, that was the most bizarre, you know, we, yeah. we were lucky enough to have like four games that are the three games of the kind of like pre, pre-playoff, whatever it was, and I just remember being like, this is, this is not NHL hockey, especially playoff hockey, I mean, the atmospheres you get to go into, um and in playoffs are just it's so so much fun and, and just a different you know it's another level you know you go to a preseason NHL game then you go to a regular season and the step up and then from there to playoffs it's just you, you can't really describe it unless you're you're in there and um, you know getting some fans in there and they're so far away that you know you can't really can't really hear them as much but I think for us like you said I think DC is unfortunately um, probably going to be one of the latter latter areas to, to start to get sports back or I guess fans back for sports. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think between us and the wizards, they yeah. were, you know, I think in the States there's only what six or seven left NHL teams, California, us, and maybe a few others, but and they're making us buy season tickets. If we want guaranteed tickets to home games. Is that what they're saying? Yeah. Well, yeah. You got to buy full season next year to get a single game ticket for this season. I'm, I'm gonna find my way around it. Don't worry. I go to all the games, but <laughs> apparently, I'll find my apparently way Buffalo, it. Buffalo is trying to give away like 2000, seats and they can't do it so if you want a couple well, of those, not surprised <laughs> yeah, <but> shocking <laughs> i think we got another one or two games there so maybe you can can you get in there uh, speaking there. speaking of momentum uh, you made a pretty impressive uh debut or not debut but one of your first games with the caps when you sort of beat the wheels off of getting malkin <laughs> and uh the caps fans are pretty behind you from that moment on did you know that the fans loved it right away like did you hear about it or did you even know that we were going bananas for that oh you definitely uh, had to know I mean, yeah, you had to, but you could, you could tell, I think, I mean, I think it was four home games or something I've, I played before, before the shutdown and every one of them, you're just, I mean, in warm ups, you're skating around like, this is, this is unreal. This is so cool. Cap one's buzzing. And then those games against Pittsburgh, like we talked about earlier, like, like those are just, again, another level. They mean so much. Um, you got the Sid Ovi thing. You got the the playoffs for however many years it seemed, and um, the Stanley Cups between the the two teams. Now it's just it, it's just fun to play in those ones. And and I mean, I didn't even realize it was it was Malkin at first. You know, I saw someone jab the goalie, and then I'm like, all right, well, you know, you kind of you know dilly you switch. That. <laughs> and, um, yeah, the next thing I knew you know, bunches were flying and I mean, he's such a good player and he's, he's a big human too. Old, old Gino Malkin, he's about six, yeah. four, six, five. So he can handle himself pretty well, but um, yeah, it's just, I think that kind of, <laughs> it was, it was, it was nice to get, get right into the mix when it comes to, uh, to the wash and Pittsburgh rivalry. Um, and, I, and I'm sure it won't be the last, uh, the last time with those guys. Yeah. I was going to say, you kind of like, it was, it's probably good for you to like, to, as one of your first games with the Cavs, not the first one, but to be playing like an up-tempo rivalry game like that. And that was, I think that was yeah. a, did, did we end up winning that game? Like 5-3 or something like that? I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I know we won those games. We, we won both the Pittsburgh. We won the Pittsburgh one in, in Wash and the Pittsburgh one in Pittsburgh. And those were like, I mean, they were like a point or something behind us or a couple points behind us. So. Yeah, it was kind of a big turning point in that season. So I'm, that was sure. that was definitely one of the, because I remember, I remember kind of the downslope. I mean, last season, Towards the end of that season, I don't know what it was, but there was just a downslope, and then those two games, you were like, "All right, they're back, let's go." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like you don't. It's almost like you don't want to wake the boys up, you know. Like if you yeah, yeah. start to get physical, and it's like the other night when the OV. Rangers, uh, Lindgren, Lindgren hits, uh, hits. Yep. Over, the guys got two tucks, and we win. It's like you don't. I don't know. Don't poke the bear. Russian two bear, greasy yeah. tucks, too. Jesus. Exactly. Right. Yeah. What's well, his new office? And from what he says, it's got to so. be. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, that's the easiest place to score a goal, so it should be, I guess. 
Yeah. That's what they that's what they tell us. I mean, I might might have to leave the blue one and go to that yeah. the other blue paint just to try and activate a little bit. Couple. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I wanted to ask about the uh, 2016 Sharks team went to the cup finals. Uh, what was so special about that Sharks group over the other, other ones? I mean, you guys had so many good teams, so many good playoff runs. Uh, do you th- And in the end, do you think you learn anything about what it takes to win the cup and maybe why you guys kind of like fell short that season or. Yeah. I, uh, again, the, the, the group we had there, as you kind of mentioned from, from Pavelski to Thornton, the Marlowe Burns, um, not only are these guys all high, high end players, but they're, they're just good people. They're good teammates. They work their bag off in practice every day. And there's, you know, there's, uh, there's a reason why they're so good and have been so good for so long. And yep. I think it was, uh, that the kind of, not the cloud that was following San Jose for all those years where they would be unbelievable in regular season and then lose first round in LA or they, you know, get so close and then lose to this team. And I mean, and it was I the same as the caps for that long. Yeah, right. and, and kind of similar when it when it comes to you know so such high end talent, great rosters, and then they just you know can't can't get past the you know whatever team. And um, I remember the coaching staff that came in that year. They really just said, "Hey, like like let's kind of have this this uh, you know whatever you want to call it cloud. Let's get this thing the fuck out of here, really." And yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, um, for those guys that had been there for so many years, from Vlasic to to like like jumbo had been there for like 10 plus years patty marlowe is on year 16 or 17 you're like okay um let, let's do this thing and, and they brought in some great great other people i remember at the, the deadline we brought in like nick spalling and roman polak who were just you know great depth ads who yep. we were already deep and we were already playing so well but it just kind of added and um you, you just realize how hard it is to win and, and i'm sure ovi and, and the guys here can tell you the same thing that for, for so long and you need you need some a little bit of luck when it comes to to having some injuries and um it, it takes a little bit of luck in matchups i mean if you talk to the leafs you know the fact they've had to play the bruins for however many years yeah. you know if they played any other team they'd have a cup parade to buy now and yep. um, <laughs> you know it's just it's just there's so many different things that have to happen and and i think like you talked about earlier you know you can have a team that's a speed team a super offensive you can have a super physical that just wears you down you can have kind of a um, you know, a team that's just trying to, to run and run you over every game. And there's so many different, different makeups that you have to be able to get past and um, staying healthy and, you know, the travel. Um, I remember that was one thing where Pittsburgh was in the Eastern time zone for the whole, you know, four rounds and we had played Nashville um, in the seven game series. And then we had St. Louis in the seven game. And, you know, it's, you don't ever want to have excuses or this or that, but um, there's just, again, it's, it's so hard to win the Stanley cup that, that when you do, and, um, you're able to look back, it's, it's, it's gotta be one of the best feelings ever. And, you know, hopefully I can, hopefully I can do that. Yeah. For so sure. now you're, sorry, sorry. <laughs> now yeah, you're yeah. in your second year in DC, kind of, kind of second year. Yeah. Um, what's it like being in the room and on the ice with Ovi, like having him as a captain? Cause like, obviously you've played with Jumbo and like, yeah. so do the two compare in any ways or are they so separate or so different from each other? Yeah, I think they've got some similarities. They've also got, you know, some some big differences where where you know Ovi Ovi talks in the room and then when he talks guys listen, but he's he's definitely a, a go out there and you know lead by example. I mean he when he's playing physical, when he's you know, he's, he's shooting the puck, I mean there's there's nobody better. And um, I think for Jumbo, he he's a guy who was a captain in Boston and then came and was a captain in San Jose and um you know, he, he, he's a guy who, who is very vocal and, um, you know, would love to joke around too, like Ovi does, you know, I think those guys, the reason you can have such success is, is every day they're still having a blast. I mean, Jumbo was the guy where it'd be Christmas day and he'd come in with his kids and tape his hockey stick for, you know, a week from now. And, you know, he just uh, loved to be in there, loved to be around the guys. And, and I think Ovi's the same way where, you know, he's still working on his one timers after practice, he's still doing his thing. And um, it, it's pretty cool to see, see the work ethic those guys have and then continue to have and um, why they've both had such success. So, um, you know, I, I want Jumbo to, to hopefully be able to win a Stanley cup, maybe not this year because uh, I got to win one first, but right. um, you know, I think for, for, for the crew that we got here in, in Washington, the leadership group, I mean, I, I think that's something where, where Ovi obviously leads, but, but Backstrom is, you know, such a good leader to Johnny Osh, um, 
you just look up and down the, the, the roster and we just got such a good group of guys. It, it makes it that much better, more, more better when, or <laughs> speak some English here, makes it that much better when we, when we win. So AB is a big, more better guy. Don't worry. He's, yeah. he's all the more, the more better train. <laughs> Way more. There better. you go. Way more better. So uh, obviously you've uh, taken a taken a role of defending these guys that you've just been listing, and it seems like we've got a few guys who like to step for step up for them. We're obviously big fans of you doing it. So I'm just curious, like what led to you loving the physical game so much? Yeah, well, a big a big thing. I mean, when when you get into the NHL, you, you've kind of again got to do something that separates yourself from from others. And um, I think even for Willie, I mean, when Willie came in, you know, fourth line. Uh, and, um, you know, 10, 10 to 15 fights uh, his first couple of years. And um, as you kind of establish yourself and are able to get relied upon and, and be in the lineup every night, then you can continue to kind of get more trust from the coaches, um, can kind of continue to, to build your game and, and expand that into other things. And um, I think for me, I was a bigger guy um, at the time. Dallas had a lot of kind of smaller, more offensive defensemen, Alex Goligoski, Trevor Daly, John Klingberg. Um, and it was kind of like, Hey, if you're, you're going to be in every night, we need someone who can defend. We need someone who can have a good stick can be, can be physical and kind of compliment those guys. And, um, I think it was something where, you know, we don't all run the half wall. We don't all run the power play. So, um, you know, there's still jobs for other guys too. And uh, I think from, from seeing some of the teams that have won, you know, Tampa Bay for the longest time had such skill and then they, they bring in a few guys that, that can be hard to play against that can complement and open up the ice a little bit for, for those other skilled guys. And um, on top of that are pretty darn good players too. Um, you know, Goodrow, Barkley Goodrow is a big, big piece of the trade deadline for them. Uh, that Blake Coleman too, who, who, again, these guys aren't running the half wall or, um, you know, putting up 50 goals, but they, they have important roles. And, and I think for me, um, it, it's something that I, I kind of got into the league doing, um, you know, being physical front of the nets, these types of things. And, um, you know, I think I'm, I'm always going to, I'm always going to continue to do it because it's, it's once you get away from what got you in, um, I feel like you get in trouble and, and, you know, kind of lose that edge. And um, I, I love doing it. I, I love, you know, taking pride in that and kind of just, just, you know, getting some room for, for other guys out there. And, and it's, uh, it's not always easy. I mean, there's, there's a million tougher guys than me. There's a million bigger guys than me. Um, you know, it definitely helps when you have guys like Zidane Char and Tom Wilson and, you know, Garnet Hathaway on your team yeah. to, you know, to, to be physical and, and kind of have some voices behind you too. when you get into some of those altercations. So, um, you know, hockey is a fun game. Uh, I, I think when, you know, you get to get to score and win some games and can, can have other extracurriculars happen too makes it uh, makes it that much better love it love it so we'll wrap it up here with kind of some rapid fire questions we appreciate the time and it's been awesome but uh no we, you kind of talked about this earlier and you haven't been able to do too much but i mean vancouver kid cali for most of your career and then you come here dc what's kind of been your favorite thing to do here in the dmv or maybe favorite part about this region or anything like that yeah, uh, I'm a big sports guy. So being able to have, you know, two NFL teams, uh, baseball or two baseball teams, I guess, too, uh, basketball, everything. I think that's, that's been pretty cool to kind of embrace the, the DMV sports out here. Um, the, the food and stuff, too, has been awesome. There's a few few great spots in Boston kind of by the practice rink where oh, yeah. I've been able to check out. And um, I don't think dining's open yet in D.C., but sure will be be a couple more more things to check out but i'm being a canadian kid too um i'll be honest when i drive down constitution to the games i'm just like looking at how yeah. cool all these buildings are but i don't know enough about what each of them are and the history and all this so um i'll have to hopefully get that figured out too i'm a big taco bomba guy right there next to the rink when i leave men's leagues on thursdays taco bomba. <laughs> i like it i like it it's always, got right a, there. it's always got a big, uh, big lineup outside. But I haven't yeah, had yeah. Before. But nobody's out there eating that after the 950 Men's League game. That's the beauty oh, of it. Weird. Oh, they're, they're too busy waiting for the autographs after. Yeah, they don't have yeah, fans in. Yeah, exactly. Um, so we'll start with the rapid fire questions. Uh, toughest player you've had to match up against in your career? Toughest player to match up against? Um, I mean, I, I'd probably have to go with one of the obvious ones, but it's true. Is is probably uh, probably McDavid or Crosby for sure. Shocking, yeah, yeah, yeah shocker. Yeah. Wonder why. <laughs> I wish I had something better for you. But Wonder uh, why? Yeah, I mean, at least you're not on any highlight reels of them. That's that's what I mean. Take, take I, I, made, the I, think was, I think it was 2013. I made uh, Patty Kane came in on me. It was on a PK, and he did like one of the spinner on the back end, short side. Oh, yeah. well, I was on you. 
Who was that's the- what I mean. Is twenty <laughs> NHL twenty thirteen? It was like my tenth game ever, and I was like, I honestly <laughs> don't know how I could have had a better stick. I don't know how I could have done anything else. I just kind of looked at our goalie like, All right. Come on, time. man. Now it's we're like, going to be on there, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's like, who's the poor fucker back... in Toronto that McDavid get, gave oh, this Morgan, Morgan, Riley. Morgan, Riley. Morgan Riley, Riley when he acted like he was coming right and then tuck left on him? I was like, oh, it's, yeah, it's I skate, not I skate a great look. Mo, Mo in the summers back in Vancouver, and we kind of, I think it was in the summer, we kind of looked at each other like, it's going to happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like you go back to the uh, to the bench, like coach. I mean, what else you want me to do is Patrick Kane. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. hey, those guys get paid too, you know. Like those good yeah. yeah. players out there, they call it yeah. the best league in the world for a reason. Yep. All right, uh, next rapid fire, funniest guy in the room, just guy making everybody laugh, always pulling jokes. Ah, uh, there's there's a bunch of good. I mean, Osh is Osh is pretty darn funny. I think Osh is just he's he connects with everybody. You know, it doesn't matter if you're from the Czech or you're from Russia or you're. 20 or year 40 you know i think oh yeah. is oh is pretty funny and, and all the guys get along with them but um yeah we'll even on former there. teams on former teams yeah. um i mean Jum- jumbo is pretty funny too I mean, Joe. Yeah. Like, jumbo is he's awesome he's always good for a laugh in the room keeping things loose um yeah, yeah i might go with those two and then my final one uh better pass out better passer jumbo or backstrom <sighs> You sewered him with that that's question, like, right? That's like, that's like know, one, that one A or like one A, A. B. Yeah, one <laughs> A, yeah I mean, I they're honestly both. There's a reason why they're both are going to have be in the Hall of Fame at some point. You know, yeah. I honestly don't even know who I'd pick. Like, I wasn't honestly expecting an answer. Yeah, I, I, can, I don't think I can give you an answer because after seeing Backy up close, you know, I got to watch Jumbo for six years and see you know, see how he is, like how he is on that. I mean, you can't give him a bad pass and, and everything he gives you just sits flat, like on two on ones, like in practice, you know, he's passing it. Like, yeah. Yeah, like okay, I might as well go stand and he still finds a lane. And then on backy, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think he's ever given a bad pass to anybody. It's, it's amazing. You know, the sauce, everything he throws from the half ball sits perfect. And um, yeah, both, both unbelievable. So. Uh, best, best city to visit or to play on the road. Best city to play on the road. Um, I really like Chicago. I think Chicago is a really cool, cool atmosphere. I think, a, I think that's a common answer. Yeah, yeah people I love say, Chicago. Yeah. Chicago is awesome. They, I mean, especially they've had good teams too. So they're, you know, they're they're always packed. Um, the uh, the anthem when they're singing. I don't know if you guys have seen clips oh, of that. Nuts. Like, yeah. yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, you just get chills when you're, you know, you're sitting there in the blue and you're like looking around like this is so cool that's 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 like a welcome to the nhl moment when you play in chicago and, and just see that so um and i'm not sure if we, i'm gonna get an answer out of this but um the player you hate the most in the nhl right now you have to answer <laughs> player, <laughs> so you, i don't know if i'm gonna get an answer but you have to answer <laughs> yeah i mean i don't know if there's one player where you're just like oh, brad Marchand. all right cool yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i think uh, now that we played, you know, seven, seven teams for the past 31 games, you're just like so tired of every team. You're just like, I just can't even look at you yeah. anymore. But yeah, I don't know if there's one, one, one guy. I mean, maybe ask me after our playoff run this year, I might have, I might yep. have one, someone for you. All right. Sounds and good. Then we'll, the one we'll have you leave us with here, the final one, give us one word to describe big Z. One word to describe big Z. Can I, can I use big? Um, yeah, well, yeah, you can. Yeah. Um, I would say, uh, Friendly? I don't know. There he's, it is. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah, friendly. The I unexpected least. answer for sure. There you go. Yeah, yeah. He's just like so genuine. You're just like, man, you're so nice. Like, yeah. Right? yeah, but when he's on the ice, he's got those like big ass glaring eyes, like if uh, just looking down on you. And I'm just like, what? honestly, exactly. what scares me the most about him if I was on the ice is how much thigh you can see between the socks and the the damn pants. But he's so big, <laughs> yeah. you probably, they probably don't make socks long enough for him to snap them all the way up there. Exactly. Yeah. He's, he's got to have custom everything. I mean, right. from his suits to his hockey gear to his, I mean, everything in between. Yeah. Crazy. Love it. Well, there it is. Dilly, we appreciate you coming on, man. Like you said, when, um, when things get back to normal, we technically own the rights now to Dilly Does DC. So we'll Dilly have to fire it up, DC. hang yeah, out like a bit. It. We'll fire around Clarendon, have ourselves a time. But uh, again, yeah. man, thanks for the time and uh, best of luck to you guys the rest of the season. We'll, we'll have to catch up after the cup run. Sounds good. Yeah. We can get another one going after the cup run. Uh, yeah. I'll be good. All right, thanks, Beth. Thanks, fellas. Bark down. Off the bar. Bark down. Bark down. Off the bar and down.